Hi, my name is Lena. Welcome to my channel. And it's the second video uh, about the Odyssey by Homer. And we are filming in the middle of the night because I have watched Meg and I'm not sure that they actually read the book. But nevertheless, I got to see Jason Statham uh, diving and swimming. It was worth it. It was entertaining. Unfortunately, there were some girls uh, near me that were talking during the entire movie. So the experience was kind of spoiled, but I saw it on a big screen. So, and a bit of life update. Uh, my aunt is subscribed to my channel. She is watches my video. She doesn't um, understand English, but she says that I, I'm not doing my best, so that I should write scripts and I should um, recite some lines, uh, rehearse it better. And this video is absolutely unscripted and completely unrehearsed, I'm sorry. So, um, those are my first impression. It's nothing more. And I was surprised. Uh, this time we read chapters 7 to 12. Basically all the adventures of Odysseus um, before he got to the uh, Calypso and her island on on her island and I was surprised how entertaining how interesting they were to tell you the truth I know all the story the entire story the, all the spoilers because I listened to uh, literature and history podcast I will leave a link to it into info box because I think it's very worth uh, listening to. I found out about Hesiod <laughs> from this podcast and uh, about many interesting things. So I advise you, uh, if you are interested, uh, to go and to listen to it. So I know all the spoilers and to tell the truth, when somebody else tells you just the summary of Odyssey, it sounds kind of stupid. And uh, the guy who does this podcast, Doug, I do not remember his surname, he has a very good sense of humor and uh, it's very entertaining, it's funny. Uh, so it kind of sounds stupid. Uh, but when you read it, um, it's a very, very entertaining, a very smoothly written, and uh, I cannot find any fault with it, apart from some of the words uh, my translator used. It was translated into Russian, I don't know, somewhere in 19th century probably. So, they are not exactly archaic, the words, uh, but I think they changed the meaning a bit and I have no idea why. Uh, for example, he calls Persephone the wife of uh, Ain. Um, he calls her uh, Persephone the terrible. Uh, it can be translated as terrible, it can be translated as ugly. And I have no idea why, because the way I know the myth, she, she is not any of such things. She is not ugly, she is not terrible, she is just a very beautiful girl who was snatched up uh, from the surface of the earth and uh, dragged into the um, the uh, underworld 
and made to marry the king of the underworld. Um, <laughs> I have no idea why she's called the terrible or the frightening or the horrible. And uh, uh, he calls uh, Odysseus, Odysseus the cunning. It's not exactly a compliment, I think. Uh, I believe in Iliad he was called Odysseus the wise, but here he is cunning. I absolutely agree that he is, but it's not exactly a compliment. So, I was surprised uh, how entertaining it actually is. But I noticed how Odysseus is not actually to blame for any of the misadventures that happens to his comrades, to his uh, companions, to his friends. He admits that he is the one responsible for the time when Cyclops uh, locks them up uh, in the cave. Uh, and eats them uh, two in the evening, two in the morning, because Odysseus was uh, curious about uh, this cycle. He wanted to see what kind of person he is, uh, what kind of tradition um, he has. And actually, um, Odysseus was kind of hoping to get a wonderful gift as a guest from Cyclop, but if I'm not mistaken, uh, before that they steal sheep, they, ships, uh, sheep, they steal, steal cattle, and whose cattle it was. So, Odysseus admits that he is to blame for the death of these uh, people, the ones that die, die in the cave with Cyclops. But in every other case, in every other adventures, he loses his uh, companions, uh, his friends, but it's always somebody else to blame. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the time with the Hydra, uh, when he admits that he did not tell his companions that six of them are going to be killed, uh, but he thinks that he actually saved the, everybody else because if he had said that six of them were going to be killed, they would stop rowing and everybody would, uh, they would stop rowing, they would be just uh, trying to hide, they would be waiting for the doom and everybody would get killed. So this is his story. And I'm not sure how old he was when he went to Troy. But let's say he was 30, so by the time he is telling his story, um, he is actually 50. And I was surprised how uh, much of Nesta rub off on him. Uh, <laughs> because some um, young guys are mocking him and want to, him to compete with them at the games, and he starts uh, telling um, about the better times, the times when he was younger and that nobody would be able to compete with them, with him when he was younger, just the way Nesta does. And um, I'm not sure what else to say. Uh, I, uh, some bits and pieces 
are very different from the Iliad. For example, in Iliad, uh, Patroclus uh, he asks Achilles uh, to finally bury, bury him because he cannot cross over to the underworld because he didn't have the proper burial and until he has this proper burial he cannot cross over to the uh, underworld to the, uh, all the ghosts and here in Odyssey uh, we have this young guy who got drunk in the evening uh, fell asleep on the roof and in the morning uh, he well he fall down and die and nobody knew about it so he didn't get this proper burial but uh, Odysseus actually meets him in the underworld underworld <laughs> yes <laughs> he goes there uh, on a mission so this guy wasn't uh, buried properly and he still uh, go to the underworld and to all the other ghosts. So that that was strange. And um, what else? <laughs> um, I cannot remember right now. It's probably wasn't important. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well. Nevertheless, <laughs> I was surprised how entertaining it was, and I'm looking forward to reading the next six chapters, uh, 13 to 18. Oh, uh, the thing I was going to tell you that all these uh, descriptions of sacrifices and of uh, hosts being kind to their guests and uh, I think they I think that reading classics was right that they are kind of prescriptive so those bits and pieces they I believe they telling us true customs true uh, traditions and they are here in the Odyssey and in the Iliad so that we wouldn't forget the proper way to treat our guests or the proper way to make sacrifice to gods and to make feast afterwards. So it's very interesting and it's kind of just a bit historic, I think. Thank you for watching, goodbye and happy reading. Bye.